What if I told you there was more to the story behind game-changing events? Get ready for my new podcast, That Moment with Damon John. Every Tuesday on the Black Effect Podcast Network, we'll jump into the personal stories of some of the most influential people on the planet, from business moguls and celebrities to athletes and artists. Join me every Tuesday for That Moment with Damon John on the Black Effect Podcast Network, the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever. Wherever you go to get your podcasts. Between April 1971 and September 1972, six young black girls were snatched off the streets in Washington, D.C. This child was uh, laying on the side of the road. The person said, I murdered your daughter. The killer believed that he may have been seen. I will admit the others when you catch me if you can. Signed, Freeway Phantom. Listen to Freeway Phantom on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Hi, I'm Danny Shapiro, host of the hit podcast, Family Secrets. Each episode explores a long-held family secret that has finally come to light. Find out what keeps millions of people tuning in to hear astonishing stories about the secrets that are kept from us, the secrets we keep from others, and yes, even the secrets that we keep from ourselves. I hope you'll join me and my extraordinary guests for this new season of Family Secrets. Listen to Season 8 of Family Secrets on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Today's show is pre-recorded. Like a million bucks, bucks, yes. things in its cups. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Y'all tell me who could it be but Steve Harvey? Oh, yeah. yeah. listening to me. Mm-hmm. Put your hands together for Steve Harvey. Put your hands together. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, oh. I sure will. Good morning, everybody. You are listening to The Voice. Come on, dig me now. One and only. Uh huh. Steve Harvey got a radio show. Yeah, he do. Steve Harvey got a radio show. But like I said the other day, you got something too, though, don't you? God done done something wonderful for you. You just got to thank him for it. You know, uh, in the midst of all this going on in my life and in your life, you know, I always use myself as an example because, I, well, I mean, that way, I guarantee 100 percent I know what I'm talking about. Um, here, here's the situation. You know, with everything that's going on in my life and all the things I'm asking God for. In in the midst of a, 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 a taxing and a very trying situation that's very challenging for me right now, man, God just keeps on, keeps on surprising me. He keeps doing things. And I want you to look at your life. Oh, for a second. Let's make two columns here. Let's make a, a column of all the things you want from God. You know, just do that throughout the course of the day. You know, you know, run down a list of all the things you're asking God for, all the things you're praying for, the things you aspire to, what you, your dreams, your visions, whatever it is. Just make a column, a list of all those things. 
Let's make three lists. And then the second list, I want you to make a list of everything that you've been asking God for. So I guess that could be a little bit of the same. But this third list, I want you to do a checkoff point. I want you to do a, make a list of everything that God has given you that you've asked him for. Just think about it like that for a second. I may be explaining a little wrong right now, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to pull it together for you. Make a list of everything you're asking God for. Just just list it. You know, it's okay. It's a dream board. You can call it that. I got one. It's a vision board. You know, every, everybody's got something you hope for. Make a list. Now, I want you to make a, another list of everything you've asked God for that he's given you already. See? This is a good list because sometimes, and what I've been guilty of, and maybe you too, in in my request list on my dream board, I keep focusing so hard sometimes on the what I'm yet to receive. I keep focusing so hard on the what I hope he gives me. I keep focusing so hard on the things that are yet not fulfilled in my life that sometimes as he starts checking off my wish list, the things I've asked for in the past that have come to pass that he's given me, I sometimes in praying for what I want, forget to thank him for what he's done for me. And I'm currently in the middle of that situation. And this morning when I woke up, I really, man, I just got on my knees this morning and I quit tripping for a second. I said, man, hey, God, you know what? I really do need all them things I'm asking for, and I really am believing that you're going to give it to me. But in the meantime, though, man, have I overlooked some important details here. I had to really look at what he's done for me. I mean, look, man, take yourself out of it personally and and look. Well, you can leave yourself in it however you want to be. Some people can't do that. So just leave yourself in it then. But, man, I started looking at the I part of me. And I started looking around at the what's happening overall. Like, man, he has kept my family together in, in spite of the attempts to tear it apart. I look at all of that. I look at how he's blessing my children with the desires of their heart, which I pray for my kids. You know, I want my kids to have a better life than I've had. I really, really do. I don't want them to take as long as it took me to get it together. I really, really don't. I'm trying to say, hey, man, if you go to college, this is what you can be. Don't do like your father did. Don't go three years, drop out, throw yourself into a spiral, and then got to start scratch all over again. You know, and and for the most part, so far, you know, they're doing quite well of it. You know, know, they're getting kicked around a little bit, but that's life. I started thinking of the blessings that he's helped me overcome with some of the previous mistakes I've made in relationships in my life. And then I started looking about the the things he's blessed me with that I've been asking him for. But since I've moved on from it, I I forgot to keep thanking him because I got to always thank God for a roof over my head. Because guess what? When I was asking for the roof and I didn't really have it, then he gave me one. Now, since he gave it to me, what, I'm just cool now? I can't ever go back to him and go, hey, man, I really do appreciate this roof over my head. Because there was a time when I was living in a car. But see, so every morning I wake up, I got to remember the fact that I have a home now. Because I got to look back and go, man, that was time, Steve, when you didn't have no home. But see, we forget what God has done for us because in our column, the want column, the need column, we oftentimes forget for the columns and the check marks that he's already fulfilled in our life. You've got to take inventory every now and then, daily if possible. But I know we humans, we're not going to do that. I don't. But you've got to take inventory of your life to say, hey. What has God done for me? You know, and remember something else, too. Change is good, but change is challenging. Accept the challenge that it is. Look, a lot of you come up to me all the time and say, Steve, man, thank you, man. Boy, you in the morning, man, I really be needing that. Well, I done said it a hundred times, but I'm going to say it again. Y'all, I be needing it, too. You know, you understand, sometimes what, what what God is dealing with me is 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 for me. But now I'm in a sharing position where I can open up and if I just if I just quit being so about me and become a little bit more transparent, I can maybe some of me 
that's happening to me is happening to you. And you could see some of this in me. That's why I use myself as an example, because, man, I'm catching it, too. Y'all, I ain't perfect either. So for those of you that come up to me and say that, I want you to understand these these talks in the morning, man, this is important for me because, man, I need these conversations from God. I need God to continue to strengthen me, to show me the way, to help me understand what's happening to me. And see, as we've all, those of you who have made the decision to change, to become a better person, a better woman, a better boy, a better girl, a better man, for those of you who have made the decision to change, change is a challenge. And accept the challenge because it's going to come. Because right out of that, here come the haters. Here they come. People you don't even know. Discussing your life and your change. If God see you really, really mean what you say, in spite of what they say about you, God will raise you above the fray. He'll keep promoting you. He'll keep blessing you. He'll keep moving you up. He will use you as a show off point. He'll show you off, man. He'll make you re- he'll make you look good to people, man, who wish you'd fall all day long. And so to all your haters, all your haters will end up just watching you rise, man. They will watch you continue to grow. That's what God will do for you, man. You can fool the world, but you can't fool God. God know your heart. He know your every thought, man. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. If you're looking for someone to help you unpack Queen Charlotte of Bridgerton's story, you're in the right place. It's me, Gabby Collins. Come with me, because on Queen Charlotte, the official podcast, we're stepping behind the scenes and the drawing boards of this team to experience the life breathed into the Bridgerton prequel. Listen to the leaps executive producer and series director Tom Verica took to capture the feeling that's put that lump in your throat. And you've got to catch creator Shonda Rhimes. She's dropping gems, diamonds, and mics. On this podcast, we're going beyond the basic line of questioning and getting to the heart of the show, all while appreciating the contributions of the show's creative teams and remarkable cast. Go inside each episode of Queen Charlotte of Bridgerton's story with the creatives, the cast, and creator Shonda Rhimes leading the way. Listen to Queen Charlotte, the official podcast, Thursdays on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or anywhere you get your podcasts. Ladies and gentlemen, here we are. It has arrived, the new day, the new chance, the new opportunity. Now today, I'm going to be honest with you, I had to gather myself this morning. Because unlike yesterday, I kind of woke up, woke, I had woke up yesterday, I got some bad news. And so my, my morning yesterday was a little rocky in the beginning, right? And so I have learned over the years that your feelings are a barometer of your thoughts, meaning that a guy taught me once that if you're feeling blase, if you're feeling a little off-center, if you're not in a good mood, all you have to do is go back for the past 30 minutes and, 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 and reflect on what you've been thinking because your feelings are a barometer of your thoughts. And so I had to realize that I had been thinking negative thoughts or bad thoughts based on the bad news I had gotten. And it was affecting the way I was feeling because your feelings are a barometer of your thoughts. So yesterday was a little rocky for me. And then in the middle of the day, after I got it, started taping Family Feud, I had to remember all the things to be grateful for. So today I made the necessary adjustments because I'm still grappling with the news of yesterday. But I decided on the edge of my bed to start my day with nothing but gratitude. And I started focusing on all the things God had done for me relative to my life, to my health. I mean, he's done some things for me health-wise that I had specifically asked for, and he gave them to me. Now, health is wealth. I know people who make a lot of money would give it all up to be healthy. God has given me that. So, man, I'm having a great day. Steve Harvey Morning Show, Shirley Strawberry. Carla is out today, the mouth of the South, Junior, and the legend that is nephew Tommy. I am here today. Yeah. Yeah. As I am. <laughs> Glory. Yeah. Junior, what's on your mind, man? Well, you know what, Uncle? I'm glad you said something. I'm glad you're feeling that way because it's a big day for you. Big day for you. Yeah, what's happening? Because you remember, remember yesterday? You oh. promised. You promised today. No cussing all day. God. 
Mm. You had forgot, huh? I didn't. I'm waiting on you. Ooh. Now, Junior, now, did I, I ain't say like just in the opening? No, no, no. You said the whole show today. Four hours. Four hours. You said you were going to be able to now, do that. Now, is that on the commercial breaks, too? Shirley, I'll let you make that call, Shirley. You think on the commercial breaks? It's... Why? Because, yeah, he's going to need some relief on the he, air. You're going to have to have. He doesn't really curse on the air, though. Yeah, yeah but he's going to have to. None today, right. though. Mm-hmm. Okay, no, I know. all morning, Steve. Commercial all morning, breaks, too. <sighs> you well, can't believe you said that or something? You, you, you did it. Well, I had just I, I had just talked about how grateful I was. Day now I got I got I got to rethink yeah. it now. Cause mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> ah, this might not be. <laughs> this off to a good start could go bad real quick. Yeah. Yeah. A break at a time, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be good today. <laughs> We're gonna try you. All right. Coming up in 32 minutes after the hour, we'll hear from the nephew as he runs that prank back right after this. <laughs> I got it, I got it, I got it. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now to start your morning off with the nephew and run that prank back. What you got for us, Nev? LaRonda mm-hmm. is my girl. I'm not finna play with you now. Let's go, cat dog. Hello? This call will be recorded and monitored. I have a collect call from Ronnie an inmate. If you would like to accept this and future collect calls, please press 4. Hello? 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 Yeah, yeah, hello. I'm, I'm trying to, this is Ronnie, Ronnie I'm trying to reach uh, LaRonda. LaRonda? Yeah. LaRonda Do I have the wrong number? No, you, you got the right number, man. That's my wife. Uh, who is this? Okay, okay, okay. Hold, hold up now. This Ronnie right here. Now right. I'm I'm calling for Leronda who who you know who? uh that was my girl for I got locked up. I'm trying to <laughs> pump your brakes. Hold on, hold, hold on, man. Uh, we've been married for about two years, man. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about, man. You might have the wrong number. Okay, hold up then. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait a minute. I know the Leronda ain't man. I know the this ain't. Say, man, hold up, man. Wait a minute. LaRonda, LaRonda is married? Yeah, man. Hey, just in case you didn't hear me, LaRonda's married. We got a 16-month-old child, man, all right? And, and, and we've been married for two years. I don't know who you calling. I'm calling for LaRonda. F- I'm finna get up out this f- in six weeks. I've been, all, I've, been, uh, I've been writing letters and all kind of stuff, sending them to her mama house. Whoa, now, whoa, you trying whoa. to tell me? You trying whoa, to send? Well, you been sending what to her mama house? I've been sending letters. I've been sending letters since the day I got locked down. Wait a minute, been homie. Send- when you been? How, how long has it been since you been sending letters, man? I've been locked down for five years. Five years, and I've been sending letters. I don't miss one week without sending something to Laurent. All right. What, what's her mama name then? Ain't, ain't her mama name Miss? Hold on, man. You been sending letters to my girl's mama for? For five years. Five um, years. I'm finna get out in six weeks. I've been locked down right at five years. No, nah, man. She ain't got no letters from you, man. You, She ain't got no letters. Uh, We've been together for two years, man. I'm sorry to break your heart. Okay, hold up, hold up, hold up. Let me ask you this here, man. What, man? Hold up, because see, you you got me all f***ed up man. with this right here. Now, let me ask you this right here. How I know her mama name? How I know all this here, man? What what uh, what I'm trying to explain to you? I got the right person. I just I'm just blown away by you trying to tell me y'all married now. Yeah, we married now, happily married. Hey man, hey, you need to take your back to that cell, man, for real. Hey, hold up, cuz first of all, what you ain't finna do just come at me wrong. Now that what ain't finna happen now. Now I got a whole lot on my mind and a whole lot of stress. Now I'm gonna tell you this right here just to let you know how this finna to go. I don't go. Hmm? I'm finna to be up out of here in six weeks, and when I do get out, I am coming to see Laurent. Know that. I'm finna to come out there and... Brother, man, look. Hey, you up here calling me with this ignorant stuff, man. That's what probably got your tail in jail anyway. Hey, man, hey, man listen. You come up here, you gonna wind up getting both put up in the penitentiary, man, because I ain't playing about my wife, man. Brother, you just need to go and chill out. After you get out of... Brother, stay somewhere, man. Look, don't, man. Don't bring... 
All right, man. Look, man, all I'm trying to do is... Hey, I don't care what you're trying to do. Try to keep your... That's all I'm trying to tell you to do. So we don't both end up in the penitentiary, man. Or your might be in... You're going to end up in a grave if you keep testing me, man. I'm telling you, don't bring your here, bro. Just stay there. Relax, breathe, enjoy the your air, man. All right? That's all I'm saying. All right, man? That's it. Hey, 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 what you ain't finished to do is try to threaten me, fool. See, hey, I, yo, I, homie, I, you up here talking about keep your Man, don't bring your here looking for no runner because I will put two up in your. I'm, I'm coming you. to see my girl. That's my girl. We've been married for two years. I'm trying to tell you. You better take your on somewhere. You. We will shut this down. Who you think I'm you talking? You. Who you think you talking to? I'm talking to a that's in jail. Don't drop the up your black. Look, man, I'm fixed to come home in six weeks, and I'm coming to see LaRonda, whether your like it or not, and I'm going to see her mama miss What you ain't going to do is get in the way of me and my girl, somebody I've been loving and writing letters to all this damn time I've been on lockdown. Man, bring your I will say it slow to you. Bring your and I swear to God, I will put your in the grave. That's where I'm going to put you, homie. Who you, you think? Bring your Bring you better stay up in the penitentiary. I'm coming down there to see my girl, see her mama, and get my girl back. My girl leaving with me. You know, the only thing you're going to be seeing is the casket. Because I'm putting your in there, man. You, I'm telling you, you bring your ass out of I swear to God, man. You knock on my door if you want to. I, I'm telling you, man. Go to a mama house. I'm putting your ass down, homie. Don't, I'm not playing with you, man. All right? That's my girl, man. That is my girl. I will up. You ain't finna do nothing to me. You ain't finna do nothing but release my girl over to me. That's what you finna do. That's it. No, I'm gonna release a world in your ass. You come to this ass. Dude, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm telling you, man. I, boy. Woo-hoo. You, you keep the world, man. I'll be waiting on you in six weeks. I'm gonna tell you that. I'll be waiting on you in six weeks. Bring your to my door. You won't be going nowhere else. I'm telling you that. You talking all this bad stuff on the phone. You ain't gonna do a Thing when I get there, but give me my girl back. That's it. You, you ain't talking. You talking that behind the bars. You ain't. Sh listen, I got one more thing I need to say to you before I go back to my cell. Is you listening? Yeah, I'm listening. This is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by your boy Devin. Wait, 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 wait. What? The f is? Hold up, dog. Listen, this is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked. By your boy Devin. Man, <laughs> y'all almost got him up. <laughs> I'm telling you, cuz I was about to hit the jail, man. You I, might. I don't play that shit. <laughs> y'all need to stop playing his own fucking games, man. Oh, <laughs> shit, Devin. You fucking motherfucker. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. I'm telling you, I was finna go down. I'm going down in flames. <laughs> boy, woo! -hoo. Woo! Uh, let me, I need to breathe out this. Man, go get you a drink, man. <laughs> yeah, I need to get me some up in me, bro. I'm about to count down six weeks on this, man. <laughs> All come right. Come on, come on, come on. I think we're clear. Thank you, nephew. Keep Coming up alive. next, it is Ask the CLO. Chief Love Officer Steve Harvey in the building right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour in entertainment news, still trending celebrity baby news, 48-year-old hip-hop legend DeBrat is having a baby. That's right. She is five months huh? pregnant. Plus, the Don Brett Lemon. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Slow down. Uh -huh. Don't be running over there. Hold on. Well, we, need help the the we need to hear him do this story. Go yeah. ahead, show <laughs> <laughs> Plus, Don Lemon is back on the air at CNN. He is back. And Queen Latifah will host the 54th uh, NAACP Image Awards. We'll talk about all of these stories well, at the top of the hour. I pregnant, too. <laughs> <laughs> top of the hour. But on. right now, it is time to ask the CLO. Chief Love Officer Steve Harvey. Kerrigan in St. Louis writes, I'm pregnant with twins. And my fiancé just found out he has a two-year-old son by a girl he slept with while we were dating. I'm trying to work through this with my fiancé, but my parents are telling me to run. Do I follow my heart or their advice? Mm. Well, Interesting. your parents want you to run. For what? Run, run where? He has a two-year-old son mm -hmm. that he found out he had. And he produced the child while y'all were dating. 
So add the two years up plus the nine month pregnancy period. That's We're talking three. almost three years ago. You are pregnant with twins. Now, I got the man made a mistake. A boy fertile. But now y'all can't. I don't. I don't understand. Did he do something to you? I'm look. I look. I can't tell you how he to cheated. feel. But I don't think your parents have a voice in it. What do you want to do? How does he treat you? How does he make you feel? Was it a surprise to him? Has he shown remorse? Does he have regret? You know, that was, those are the things. Everybody make mistakes, including your daddy. Mm. Oh, okay. Mm. okay. All right. All right, moving on to Tiari in Edgewater. <laughs> Tiari says, uh, my, my husband's birthday is four days before mine, so we're having a 40th birthday party together. I want to try a threesome since it's on my bucket list, and he told me he has the perfect girl in mind. Uh, do you think he's already slept with her? Mm. Hell yeah. He got the perfect girl in mind. That's your bucket list, the threes? He said he got the perfect girl in mind. That's what you want. What you tripping for? If he ain't already slept with her, he about to. And you finna be there. I don't even understand what you need that other piece of information for. You, It's on your bucket list. He say he got the perfect girl. Mm-hmm. She perfect. Oh, that's what you want? Okay, I got it. I got it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You can't just go get anybody. You got to get somebody that wants to be in a threesome, too. Mm-hmm. There has been some prior conversation about this. Well, it is on her bucket list. Before she gets out of here, she wants to do that. Well, and she's forty. Mm. Oh, yeah, hey man, y'all go ahead on with all this here. I don't know what to tell y'all. There are all these crazy ass gadgets y'all Uh-oh. trying now. There's one right there, right there. There's one. Got that one. Got that one right there. Uh huh. Go ahead. Okay. Uh huh. Got that one. That was one. That was one. That was one. No, that was uh, crazy, crazy D- ass. Yeah. D yeah. June. Got it. You got him, Junior. You gonna yeah, set one. up in here, man, and follow me that close? Oh, oh, dog. You gave a promise to us. Oh, <laughs> keep this. Yes, you is. Yes, you is, sir. Yes, you is. Yes, you mm-hmm. are, Junior. <laughs> Did I? Let me ask you something, Shirley. Did you say I had I couldn't cuss on the commercial? Thing? Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> no cussing at all this morning. I'm getting yeah. away with that one too. That's a good thing, Trip. Thank you, Trip. Go ahead. See you all tomorrow, right, moving little on. fella. <laughs> I tell you right now, don't come to work tomorrow. <laughs> I'll be here. <laughs> All right. Moving on to Carl in Tampa. Carl says, my girlfriend and I have been together almost 20 years, and her husband just died. Now, that put pressure on me to step up into a leading role in her life. I love her, but not like that. I would love to keep our current arrangement. How do I tell her that? Whoa. Wait a minute. I, Shirley, did I miss something? Okay, her husband died. They've been together. Who is, as, who is this that wrote the letter? Carl. Carl wrote it. Carl wrote the letter. Go ahead. Oh, now I'm listening. Go ahead. Okay, okay. Carl. You're still mad about the cousin. Okay, Carl says, my girlfriend and I have been together for almost 20 years. Her husband recently died. That put pressure on Carl to step into a leading role in her life. And he says he loves her, but not like that. And he would love to keep their current arrangement. How does he tell her that, though? Well, obviously she wants something from Carl. Mm -hmm. Does he want, oh, does she want Carl to become her husband? Uh Uh-huh. Oh, no, lady, 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 lady. Oh, you thought, oh, you thought Carl was with you because he wanted to be your husband. Mm -hmm. No, no, see, that ain't what happened. Carl just wanted you. Because you was willing to pass it out with no strings attached. Carl don't want no strings. Carl just want the yarn. Mm. Them strings, you can have all that. And then you need to tell her she needs to go through a mourning period. Some grieving. I'm thinking you're going to have to just pack up food. After 20 years? 
Yeah, yeah, you're going to have to get off Facebook and all that, though. You're going to start closing count. everything. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, she's going to be looking for you, dog. Well, right, he's girl. gone. What we going to do? No, we're going to do what we've been doing. What, what, what you thought this was? A relationship? Yeah, because I don't, I don't want her like that. I'm ready. A little bit more excitement in the show, Shirley. Come okay. on, let's go. All right, Renee and Monroe. Says, I've been married for 13 years, and two years ago, my husband went to work and never came back home. He's (laughs) been living with another woman, and I've been through hell (laughs) and back trying to get a divorce. He left me, so why not divorce me? That boy was ready to go. That boy went to work one day. (laughs) (laughs) Just 13 years ago, and they showed back up. Boy, that right there. (laughs) He was just. So let me ask you, dog. Yeah. When he got dressed that morning, did he know? Did he know that morning? When he he knew he knew that was it. <laughs> <laughs> when he was buttoning his shirt, <laughs> he was over there laying in the bed. He said, "Yeah, his yeah. lunch bucket." Yeah, he put a few things in the trunk of the car the night before. <laughs> he left just enough to make you think he was coming back. Mm. He, wants he went to now. work and got up out of there. Man, I, <laughs> I ain't even mad at home. <laughs> All right. Coming up at the top of the hour. Thank you, Cielo. We'll have some entertainment news for you. 13 years ago. <laughs> right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. If you're looking for someone to help you unpack Queen Charlotte of Bridgerton story, you're in the right place. It's me, Gabby Collins. Come with me, because on Queen Charlotte, the official podcast, we're stepping behind the scenes and the drawing boards of this team to experience the life breathed into the Bridgerton prequel. Listen to the leaps executive producer and series director Tom Verica took to capture the feeling that's put that lump in your throat. And you've got to catch creator Shonda Rhimes. She's dropping gems, diamonds, and mics. On this podcast, we're going beyond the basic line of questioning and getting to the heart of the show, all while appreciating the contributions of the show's creative teams and remarkable cast. Go inside each episode of Queen Charlotte of Bridgerton Story with the creatives, the cast, and creator Shonda Rhimes leading the way. Listen to Queen Charlotte, the official podcast, Thursdays on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or anywhere you get your podcasts. Between April 1971 and September 1972, six young black girls were snatched off the streets in Washington, D.C. It took four murders before the police finally realized that one person was responsible. I will admit the others when you catch me, if you can. Signed, Freeway Phantom. This child was uh, laying on the side of the road. It appeared that she was probably either dragged out of the car or thrown out of the car. The person said, I murdered your daughter. The killer believed that he may have been seen by the mother. Did my mother see me? That guy is, he's out of sync with even the worst people. I thought that they would catch him. I thought it was just a matter of time. Is it possible that the killer is still alive? Listen to Freeway Phantom on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. All right, guys, still trending. We have to say congratulations again to DeBrat and her wife, Jessica Harris Dupar. Uh, you know, you may have heard they are welcoming a baby together. Okay, uh, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. <laughs> this is great. I didn't hear none of this. I've been at work. I'm oh, sorry. you didn't hear I'm it? I'm out of oh. touch. Okay, well, they were on the Sherry Show, DeBrat. You know DeBrat. She's been on Celebrity Family Feud and all of that. And uh, you met her wife, Jessica. Well, anyway, um, they're expecting a baby. DeBrat is 48 years old. Uh, wow. She announced the news. Oh. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. She announced wait, the wait, news. Wait, 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 so so wait, DeBrat wait, is wait, the one wait, having a baby, not the yeah, wife? Yeah, DeBrat is having her first baby. Wait, wait, hey. Okay. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Where y'all going with this here? What? I, I have questions. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, we all do. Well, okay, hold on, hold on. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Who's pregnant? DeBrat is pregnant. Brat. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know the rules. Okay, what is the, on. I don't. What? So, what who is, who is, who is? Her wife. Okay. Yeah. 
Jessica. I met her. I met her Celebrity Family Feud. Yeah, Celebrity Family Feud. I know. You told me that. Excuse me. I'm not not trying to be funny. This is not a funny question. The brat is pregnant? Yes, she is. Uh They have an anonymous donor. Yes, they have an anonymous donor. They had an anonymous donor. Oh, we don't know him? What what do you think anonymous means, Steve? <laughs> well, I mean... Uh, this boy here. <laughs> okay, no, I'm... Uh, all right, go ahead with the story. No, so we I don't. Well, anyway, you know, no, just congratulate them, career. okay? Mm-hmm. They're How con- is... Who... Okay, explain to me what happened. Come on, help me, y'all. Okay. Women have eggs, men have sperm. So there was that, an anonymous sp- sperm donor with so the where, eggs. So where does... What? Wouldn't you want to know where that's coming from? I, well, I they know. <laughs> oh. Well, you said anonymous, so. They know who. Yeah, they know. <laughs> they know. I, know okay. I mean, there's a lot of things going on because she is 48. And, you know, and she's had issues oh, in the past. Oh, so that was what they, what's that in vitro? Is no. What? No, we're not. What? No. <laughs> okay, well, I want. You want to know actually how she got pregnant? Hell yeah. <laughs> so it's artificial and, and Okay, so the eggs were cultivated. Right? Judy's eggs were or or Jessica's eggs and um an anonymous donor's sperm mm-hmm. were implanted in Debrat. Okay? You got oh, that okay. part? Oh, and that's how Debrat okay. got pregnant. Oh, okay. All right? Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Take us slow. We, when we when over 50, you got to explain the stuff to us like this. <laughs> but anyway, it, it's, it really is a medical miracle because they, they have had challenges in the past, both of them, in trying to get pregnant. They wanted a baby. So it is a blessing. It, it, it definitely is a blessing. So, and like so, De- so, the, so the brat has been pregnant before? Yes, and had a miscarriage. I did not yes. know that. Okay. Is, is, well, the, you know, you don't tell everything. You know what I'm saying? You don't make everything public. But now that she is pregnant. Oh, you must not be on Instagram. <laughs> now that she is pregnant and she's five months along, um, you know, now they can talk about it. You know, and now okay. they're talking about it. Well, yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Boy. So that and that's the point of the story. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> Yeah, healthy that pregnancy. Point. That's what mm-hmm. that's what we do. Yeah, yeah. I got yeah. yeah. Debrat said her, her pregnancy is a blessing because it's been quite a journey. That's what she said. Okay. Okay. We and we it. do wish them congratulations. We do. This is a happy time for them. Uh, in other entertainment news, as we move on, Don Lemon returned to he CNN. Pregnant? This- <laughs> Don Frank. <laughs> Man, y'all got, got to take me slow now. I'm serious. <laughs> Both Don ones. returned to CNN. <laughs> He's back at the news desk, okay, after being okay. off. Yeah, after being off I for a couple of days Don for, for making dude. some controversial uh, remarks about presidential candidate Nikki Haley not being in her prime because she's in her 50s. In a memo Monday night, CNN CEO Chris Licht said he spoke with Don, who agreed to participate in formal training as well as continuing to listen and learn. Lick added, we take this situation very seriously. It is important to uh, CNN that they balance accountability with fostering a culture in which people can own, learn, and grow from their mistakes. Don, of course, apologized for the comment he made last week. So Don need his He's own back. show. I think mm-hmm. Don deserves his own show. Yeah. yeah, and he had his own show. Right. You know? Yeah. I that, that was better than me. I think the training working. Because Don was back at the desk like nothing happened. I couldn't have did that. I've been back at work upset. See? <laughs> like, like he ain't see, see, that's, that. see, that's why you're not coming back to work. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, in entertainment news, Queen Latifah will host the 54th NAACP Is Image she? Awards. Oh. No, she's okay. not pregnant, Tom. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you got to take me slow. I'm just, you, you lining too much up at one time, I'm telling you. Woo. NAACP Image Awards this Saturday night, February 25th on BET. We want to say congratulations to her for the hosting job, Queen Latifah. The Image Awards will honor and highlight the major accomplishments accomplishments of black artists, entertainers, and change makers. Nominees include Angela Bassett, 
Viola Davis, Quinta Brunson, creator of Abbott Elementary, Zendaya, Jonathan Majors, Love Him, Drake, Kerry Washington, Cheryl Lee Ralph, Beyonce and Kendrick Lamar, Gabrielle Union and her husband D. Wade will be presented with the President's Award. So check it out, the NAACP Image Awards. Who? D. Wade? Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. And his wife will be presented with the President's Award. All right? Coming up in 20 minutes after the hour, we'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, so Donald Trump, back in the news, you know, he's campaigning. He said that (sighs) nuclear, listen to this, though. This is craziness. Nuclear is one of the two N-words in the English language, which shouldn't ever be mentioned during a speech. Nuclear is one of the two N words in the English language, which shouldn't ever be What's the mentioned. other one, Shirley? Okay, you know what it is. No, Shirley, I'm asking you. Now, we can't <laughs> you know deliver what it no is. half information. Nuclear and what You else, know Shirley? what it is. And let me finish the story. Okay. <laughs> During a speech to his supporters in West Palm Beach, Florida, on Monday, Trump said, we have two N words. This is quoting now. You know what the other one is, but the other is nuclear, all right? They're not supposed to ever be mentioned, ever, ever, ever. It's mentioned every single day now. The former president has been very critical of President Biden's visit to Ukraine. Trump also mentioned that he had a very good relationship with Russian President Vladimir Putin, who never, ever would have gone to Ukraine if I were president. That's what Trump said. Say, say both of them words together, Shirley. What, what are they? <laughs> Two N words. One of them is nuclear. You know what the other one mm-hmm. is. All right. <laughs> I got a partner that when he was mad, he was an N-N. <laughs> <laughs> he was a nuclear yeah. N word. Yeah, yeah, Explosive right there, with that it. That boy is everything you want. <laughs> 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 Oh, that's a nuclear right there. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least he knows better than that to say it. Man, I hope they crush his spirit and, and he don't get to run and uh, represent the Republican Party. I hope they just crush him. <laughs> I don't know, Tommy. I have no faith, no uh-huh. faith in the American public because they are the most behind closed doors racist group of people I've mm. ever seen. Wow. Uh-huh. And you're going to see Trump for president signs all over this country in front yards, especially and, my neighborhood. And he can run, but it still doesn't mean that he's going to get the nomination. He can run, you know, if he does get the nomination. It doesn't mean that he's going to. But for him to uh, even it get the mean nomination. Win for president. To get the lie. nod, it's, so it's wrong. just it's it's sickening. Oh, it's terrible. Yeah. yeah after it's terrible. watching what this man has done mm-hmm. and to put him back in office right here. Mm hmm. Man, bumped it. This is crazy. Yeah. January sixth. Right back in there. A lot of people. January sixth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A lot of people want him back in there, but uh, this is what he's talking about on the campaign trail right now: the two N words, nuclear and the other one. Say it. <laughs> say it with conviction. Say it. <laughs> no, we don't have to say it. We know what it is. We definitely know what it is. Yeah. All right, coming up at 34 minutes after the hour, we'll check your voicemail, Steve, at 877-29-STEVE, 877-29-STEVE, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now to check your voicemail, Steve. If you would like to leave a message for Steve, call him, 877-29-STEVE. 877-29-STEVE, you just might hear your call on the air. Are you ready, Steve Harvey? Yeah. Now, this lady is calling about Beyonce's Renaissance tour tickets. She wanted to share. Hey, Steve, Shirley, Carla, Tommy, and Junior. I love y'all. I'm just calling to say, you know how Tim's wasn't made for us and Tommy Hilfiger wasn't made for us? Well, those tickets for Beyonce wasn't made for us. We all know her worth. So why do those tickets have to be so high? All these young black queens, single mothers at that, want to see the show. But for 1K... Let me say it again, boy. Them tickets is high. high. Oh, yes, they are. The show. To die for us. Ooh, ooh. Oh, no, it's not. Come on, girl. Oh, 
Okay. Hey, listen to me. Go uh, ahead. Don't you your go. drunk ass call in here no more. <laughs> you know, don't, 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 don't even call him. No oh, what are you talking about? Listen to me. If everybody don't want to go to see Beyonce, don't go. Mm-hmm. You're complaining about the ticket prices when this is the value that this woman has created for herself. If it's going to sell out, there are people who are going to pay. Huh. And there's some people out here who's paying this money gladly. Well, well. big dog, you've been, you've been on stage in front of thousands. If I could have got $1,000 a ticket, I'd charge. Yeah. You'd have done that? Really? No, why not? If I could sell it out at a thousand a ticket? I, I was in a store the other day, and uh, I heard this young woman. She worked at the store. It was like, um, where, um, I, I forgot where I was. Walgreens or CVS, one of those. And the, and the young lady behind the counter was saying that she just bought her Beyonce tickets. They were $1,600. And she was happy. She said, YOLO, you only live once. And she bought hers. And she's cool with it. you have to look at where people's priorities are. Mm-hmm. Now, if that's not your priority to spend that much for a ticket, then you shouldn't. Mm-hmm. And, and, but see, you know, this world, man, they know how people are. Do you know people who are buying these tickets just so they can go there and shoot the IG footage to post that they were there? Oh, yeah. Ah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It'll be a lot Dog, of for the gram, mm-hmm. this is why this show going to be sold out. And all the cameras, like, people don't even get round of applause when they come out no more. Because everybody like cameras on. Yeah. Man, this world has changed, man. Yes, it And has. if y'all, the, she has created a demand for herself. Mm-hmm. And she can get that price for the ticket. Yeah. She's not doing it for the love of the art no more. She's doing it for money. All right. And uh, moving on to Kara. From L.A., Kara said, you make her want to make some changes. Oh. Hey, Steve, in the morning show, this is Kara calling from Los Angeles. I heard you say that you had friends that would drink and you would like the nice prior to them, and then when they would come back to you, they will come back brand new, and you just cut them all loose. And I laughed about it, but I realized that I was dealing with the same thing, and it wasn't until I heard you say it that... I had to cut some people off because I got tired of dealing with, oh, this person's real nice, and then they come back, and, you know, after some time, and then they come back real brand new, mean and nasty. And I have battled with that for a long time, for the last couple of years. But thank you, thank you, thank you, because that really planted a seed in my spirit to make some changes. Thank you. You guys take care. Bye-bye. But you know what, man? There's no law or rule that says you have to associate yourself with people that don't add value to you. Right. Come on, man. You're that's right. that's not even in the Bible. Huh. You're right. You don't you don't have to hang out with people who don't add anything to you, but who are constantly extracting from you. You don't have to hang with those people. As a matter of fact, you do yourself a disservice. And I don't feel guilty about not hanging out with nobody no more that I don't hang out with. Because I, once I find out you that way, I'm out, man. That ain't, and that ain't my fault. All right. All right, thanks for your calls. Coming up next, the prank phone call from the nephew right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, right about four minutes after, it's my strawberry letter for today. And the subject is, he is stuck to me like glue. Mm-hmm. Pretty sticky. All you right, we'll glad. find out what. Yeah, we'll you find out what glad. that. Find out what that's all about in just you, a who bit. Who don't want a sticky man? You ought to want a sticky man. What's that? <laughs> we'll find out just a bit. Right now, the nephew is here with today's prank phone call. What you got, Neff? Well, fairly, you know, we always have this problem. You know, we as African Americans, we have this problem when we when we go to a funeral, and mm-hmm. and the, and the, and the minister says. You know, can you keep your remarks to three minutes? There's some people that love to what? go to funerals. I don't know well, if y'all know about, that. Yeah, that's a, that's a whole a thing, Tommy. They love, love going. Out of it. They don't love even know the person. Love to go to funerals, man. Don't got, even know Got, got, got that black suit, aunt. that blue suit. They they ready, boy. Mm-hmm. You know, from a I male perspective, aunt, they ready. Tommy, that had to see the body. <laughs> and see, I don't get that. I don't. She that's the last thing I want to see. Yes. That's the last thing I want to see is the body. 
<laughs> she had to see the body. Mm-mm. I, I want to remember the loved one in, in my head the way I got him. I, I don't need to see the body. She and didn't then, go to any yeah. closed casket funerals. Okay. And, and, so and, and, and don't let me get to don't don't let me get to talk about those that want to take a picture oh. with, with the with body. The, with don't, the body. Don't, oh <laughs> Lord. Oh God forbid. Oh, Tommy, I got a great aunt, Tommy Sherman. I got a great aunt. Uh-huh. Uh, all you every time you call her, that's where she going to a funeral. To like, a funeral. What's going mm. on? Yeah. You know what's going on? Oh, Carolyn Mason passed. I'm finna go on down there and see her on Saturday. I'll be like, what? <laughs> Every it's a week? Social event for her. <laughs> Every week. <laughs> Every week, man. Every week. All right, this right here is three minute remarks. Three minute remarks. Let's go, cat dog. Hello? Uh, yes, I'm trying to reach a brother, Keith, please. Yeah, this is Keith. Uh, Keith, how you doing? This is Lawrence over at Hill Funeral Home. Okay. We are the ones that have the, uh, uh, doing the funeral for Sister Dolores, and that is uh, your yeah. aunt, am I, am I understanding right? Yeah, that's my auntie. Okay, and as you know, the funeral is uh, this coming Thursday. Yes, I'll be there Thursday. Uh, I'm giving you a call uh, because uh, it's been brought to my attention uh, that you were going to be giving remarks for the funeral. Is that correct? Yes, absolutely. Okay. I wanted to call you because we're getting ready to print the programs for the funeral and let you know that they have taken you off for the remarks uh, because they say that you're not going to be. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. What do you mean taking me off? Well, what I'm saying is they say that you're not going to abide by the two, three-minute rule that they have for remarks, and they wanted, they, they've they taken you off. And uh, uh, who, who, who is they? Who, who, hold on, come out, come out. Who, 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 what's the name again? Uh, Lawrence. I'm Lawrence. I'm the actual funeral director. Lawrence. And who, who told you to take me off? Uh, gave, one of the gave, one of the family members, I'm assuming, is who who uh, made the adjustment. And uh, an adjustment that ain't no adjustment. That's that's changing the whole program. Who else is on the list? Uh, I mean, there's quite a few family members doing different things uh, uh, throughout the funeral. Okay. Uh, so how did you get to my name? Is what I'm trying to figure out. That they said that. Listen to me. Listen. Listen to me. Listen to me. Brother Keith, listen to me. What they said is that you weren't going to abide by the time. You weren't going to do your remarks in three minutes or less. Listen, now, listen, listen, listen. My auntie raised me. She put me through college. And you think I'm going to I'm gonna go up there in her funeral and be under two minutes? Well, it, 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 well listen, for, listen for Brother this? Keith. Brother Keith, listen to me. Normally when we have these funerals, uh, people who give remarks, we have them three minutes or less. Okay, okay. so I'll I tell, tell you what, Mr. Lawrence, who else is on the list? Is Sheila on the list? Uh, is Sheila on the list? We have a Sheila. Yes, there's a Sheila that's singing. Take uh, her name off the list. Take her off the list and put me where she's supposed to be with my turn and her time. Is, is, is Bobby Jr. on there too? I'm, I'm uh, better not be on there. Bobby, now, yes, Bobby Jr. is giving remarks. Hell, that's a, what? That's, that's Dolores', oh. that's Miss Dolores' son, right? Yes, her son, the one that been locked up. He just got out of jail. Truth be told, he the one down there put her in the coffin. You need to take him off the list, too. Give me all that time, because I'll be if, if hey, I ain't going to take nothing that my auntie's going Brother Keith, let me, let, me, let me just say this to you. I cannot take Sheila or Bobby Jr. off. I can't make any alterations to this program unless they say that what I you can. That, sir, what you mean? You already, you already take, you already taking people name off. You taking my name off. Wait, but the, but they, they 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 orchestrated who, this though. Who, who the f- is they? Who is they? They finna have a f- problem. They try to take me off my f- auntie program. Who is they? Sir. I, I'm not gonna get into a family matter, but until they say that you, you can be on, you're in a family matter, sir. I'm not gonna. I don't want to. I don't want to have the, the, this, this turn out to be bad. And we want to have a great home going for Sister Dolores. Okay. You're damn right. And if I don't get to say nothing, I guarantee you, 
I guarantee you it's going to be a two for one in there. Somebody else going to get their in the coffin too. I guarantee you that. If I don't get to say nothing at my auntie's funeral, my auntie didn't pay for my damn college. I didn't put $6,000 in, in the funeral. I bet you, I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this, Mr. Lawrence. I bet you whether I'm on the program or I'm not, I bet you I say what the f I want to. I bet you that much. You tell they that. I didn't, my auntie didn't put me through college. I didn't put money on the funeral. I call around to see who ain't putting no money on the funeral. Tell them they can't be on the program. Man. Uh, uh, Keith, they, they, when they decide who, who, who's on it, if they change the, the format, then I will call you back. Who who the f is they? That's what I'm trying to get get you to understand. Who is they? Can I can I tell you something? And and I don't want you to get too irate, okay? okay? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, man, go ahead. I, I just want to say this, keep with. This is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just man. got pranked. You just got pranked by your cousin Bobby Junior. You bull. <laughs> I'm Bobby Junior up. I'll pass that. I'm kicking Bobby. I know that. that, that I mean, my blood pressure is all up. I ain't got time to be playing, man. Taking me on the damn program. I'm kicking Bobby ass. I know that. Oh, you Bobby man, Bobby. <laughs> Bobby said y'all grew up like brothers, man, and, and you was that, you was basically another son of Mister Lord. That's right. Yes, yes, I was, man. Oh my goodness. <laughs> hey, let me ask you this, man. What is the baddest, and I mean the baddest, radio show in the land? The Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look at that. Look at him. Mm -hmm. Okay. Man, we ought to get together and go to a funeral together, y'all. Y'all want to get together? I'm not doing it. Come on, no, let's go and, and 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 let's go do three minutes, y'all. Let's go do three minutes. Yeah. Us together. Yeah, talking. Yeah, we don't even know the person in there. We talking about you know, you know when he when he came out of high school in '55. We don't, we don't, we don't, we don't even know him. <laughs> he ain't come out in no '55. Baltimore, Maryland, the nephew will be there tomorrow night. That's right, tomorrow night. I got one on Friday, two on Saturday. The nephew is coming to the Baltimore Comedy Factory. I think Saturday is completely sold out. Got about, eh, maybe about 10, 15 tickets left for Friday night, baby. 7.30 show. Got a few tickets left. The nephew is coming to Baltimore. Back by popular demand at the Comedy Factory. Yeah. Right, just now. left there All last right. February. I just left there last February. And they got me Coming back up next. Again. <laughs> and my strawberry letter in the subject is, he is stuck to me like glue. We'll get into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. If you're looking for someone to help you unpack Queen Charlotte of Bridgerton story, you're in the right place. It's me, Gabby Collins. Come with me, because on Queen Charlotte, the official podcast, we're stepping behind the scenes and the drawing boards of this team to experience the life breathed into the Bridgerton prequel. Listen to the leaps executive producer and series director Tom Verica took to capture the feeling that's put that lump in your throat. And you've got to catch creator Shonda Rhimes. She's dropping gems, diamonds, and mics. On this podcast, we're going beyond the basic line of questioning and getting to the heart of the show, all while appreciating the contributions of the show's creative teams and remarkable cast. Go inside each episode of Queen Charlotte of Bridgerton Story with the creatives, the cast, and creator Shonda Rhimes leading the way. Listen to Queen Charlotte, the official podcast, Thursdays on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or anywhere you get your podcasts. Between April 1971 and September 1972, six young black girls were snatched off the streets in Washington, D.C. It took four murders before the police finally realized that one person was responsible. I will admit the others when you catch me, if you can. Signed, Freeway Phantom. This child was uh, laying on the side of the road. It appeared that she was probably either dragged out of the car or thrown out of the car. The person said, I murdered your daughter. The killer believed that he may have been seen by the mother. Did my mother see me? That guy is... He's out of sync with even the worst people. I thought that they would catch him. I thought it was just a matter of time. Is it possible that the killer is still alive? Listen to Freeway Phantom on the iHeartRadio app, 
Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. It is time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And if you need advice on relationships, dating, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to steveharveyfm.com and click Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right here, right now. Pop, pop. You never know. It could be yours. That's right. All right. Buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is, the Strawberry Letter. Thank you, nephew. Subject, he is stuck to me like glue. Dear Stephen Shirley, I'm 39 years old and I married a man that is very clingy. We dated for two years before we got married and we lived in different states. So when we spent time together, it wasn't an issue when we wanted to be around, when he wanted to be around me all day. He moved to my city when we got married and he works from home. He hasn't branched out and made any new friends because he was focused on me the first year of our marriage. It's our second year now, so I need him to move around and find something to do that does not involve hanging around me. I suggested he hang out with some of my friend's husbands, but he said at his age, he doesn't need new friends. I'm a homebody, but since marrying him, I get the urge to go out more and be with my friends. The other night, I was lying on the sofa, catching up on my reality shows, and he lifted me up and put my head on his lap, which made me very uncomfortable. If I'd moved or adjusted myself, he would have been offended. He always says my body language is off, so I'm mindful of my expressions. If I'm in the shower, he sits and talks to me. Some women would think it's so sweet, but I need some space. I don't enjoy going to the mall with him because he picks up things and suggests that I try them on. My best friend says that maybe he wants me to dress differently, but I don't care what he wants anymore. Our marriage is too new for me to be this annoyed with him. I don't want to have a long, intimate experience every time, but he loves it. He really is stuck to me like glue. Is this how all great husbands act? Is it cool to tell him that he's that he's smothering me or would I sound ungrateful? Well, if you said, hey, you're smothering me, yeah, you would sound ungrateful. Is it, you know, is this how, how all great husbands act? No. Um, it, but it's always something. I mean, most women are, are probably saying, how is this a bad thing? Because they long for their husbands to spend more time with them. So many couples crave that attention and you get it freely and you don't even want it. And, and you haven't said anything negative about him, uh, except that he's too clingy. He's not a cheater. He's not a liar, an abuser. He's not controlling. He's not dating your friends. Friends. He's not dating your sister. He's not dating your mom. Uh, you know, those are what we get, the kinds of strawberry letters we usually get. No, you're just mad because he likes to be around you, in your words, way too much. And after only two years of marriage, you've started to resent him for this. Um, so how do you fix this? You know, what do you do? I mean, because I get it. We all need time for us. We all need me time. I do get that concept. But I got to ask you, you spend a lot of time together, but it doesn't sound like you're talking or you're communicating. You haven't said that in the letter either. Communication, you know it, very important in a relationship. Where is that part of your marriage? You've already given up on that. You talk to your friends, you've written us, but talk to your man. I mean, you should have told him this long before now. Uh, You've actually waited so long and you're so disgusted and angry that I hope you have the patience to tell him nicely that you need time alone sometimes. I say do it now because uh, you can't continue. you're, You're not happy right here. You can't continue in this clingy space. You will end up hating him or worse, you know, filing for divorce. Steve? He too much. <laughs> he too damn much. You just a lot. What you hey? He's more than a lot. He too much. <laughs> this woman can't even go in the shower without him coming there letting the lid down, sitting on the toilet, talking to her. I'm taking a shower. I'm laying on the couch. This woman laying on the couch watching TV, getting caught up on her. He come in there, lift her up, sit down and lay her head on his lap. Man, I'm surprised. 
at anybody that don't see this as a problem. I don't care, as Shirley said, how many women would love to have. Oh, you think you want this. But every day, all day, here he come. Touching, touching, holding, holding. Lay on my lap. Do it like this here. Put this over here. Hold me. Walk with me. I don't want no friend. Man, get out the house. She 39. Look, they've been married for two years. It says, to death do you part. I got to do this till I die? <laughs> this is what we doing. This right here. Everybody needs some me time, man. Too much of anything is bad for you. You can drink too much water. As good as water is, you can drink too much water. As good as sleep is, you can sleep too much. As rewarding as work can be, you can work too much. Can you be too as rich? good as cake tastes, you can eat too much cake. Too much money? Too much money is bad for you if you don't know how to handle a little bit of money. I'm telling you, it really, really is. You're not going to believe it. When we come back, a reenactment of the film is coming on. Hold on, Steve. All right. We'll have part two of your response coming up at 23 minutes after. Today's Strawberry Letter subject is, he is stuck to me like glue. We'll get back into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, come on. Let's recap today's Strawberry Letter. The subject is, he is stuck to me like glue. Here's a woman that's struggling, been married for two years. She's 39 years old. Uh, they, When they dated, they lived in different states. And so when he came over, the clinging to her, she thought was cute. Well, they got married. She's moved. He's moved to the same state. They live together. He works from home. And the clinging has continued. She can't do nothing. He mm-hmm. home all the time. Mm-hmm. She's a homebody. She's tried to introduce him to her girlfriend's husbands. He say at this age, he don't need no new friends. She watching <laughs> TV. He walking in there, picking her head up, laying it in his lap. Oh, how convenient. Everything is about him. She in the shower. Here he comes, sitting on the toilet, want to talk. They can't, she can't do nothing. She wants to tell him it's too much, but he's sensitive. He said, my body's language is off if I'm mindful of my expressions. If I'm in the shower, he sits and talks to me. He just too much. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a couple of things, ma'am. He's insecure, could be, or he can't believe his love. You the finest thing could have ever happened to him, and he can't believe it, and he's trying to do what he thinks it holds on to. But nothing worse than a clingy man. Because yeah. clingy get right up against needy if it keep on. And everybody needs some space, some me time. Now, you can get too much me time. You can get too much space. So I have a sermon today, church music, please. <laughs> I'm really? looking for the pastor's music. We we come today. Yeah, I'm here if you need me. On this okay, thank you, D. Mm. The title of today's sermon is "He Stuck to Me Like Glue." He stuck to me like. Oh, we not talking hair glue. Uh-huh. We not talking Elmer's glue. No, not Elmer. We ain't talking model airplane glue. Mm. We ain't talking carpenter's glue. We not talking weave glue. No, not we, Blue. Mm-mm. No, but we talking. He stuck to me like Gorilla Glue. I'm talking about the glue where there is no separation. Uh-huh, uh-huh. 
Well, uh, once it go on, uh, it don't come off. My hair don't move. Mm-hmm. Ah, I'm in the shower. Yeah. Mm. He on the toilet. <laughs> talking <laughs> to me. He right there, Pastor. That's too much. I'm in the car driving. He working the gas and the brake pedal. Mm, mm, mm. That's too much. Mm. I go to the bathroom to use the bathroom myself in a most profound way. Yeah. He comes in there folding toilet tissue like, let me help you. Mm -mm, That's too much now. Oh, we talking too much now. Yeah. Uh, I'm in the bathroom brushing my teeth. Uh Uh-huh. And here he come, want to rinse out my mouth. (laughs) How you rinse somebody else's mouth? Ah, we're talking too much now. (laughs) I'm in here getting ready for work. Uh Uh-huh. I put my leg. In my panties. Uh-huh. Mm. He put his leg in the other hole. Oh, <laughs> wait a minute. This is too much now. <laughs> I, 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 I think we're too close now. We can't wear drops. I'm putting on my bra. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I got one breast in the right cup. Uh-huh. He gonna put his breast in the left cup. And we talking, <laughs> he stuck to me. That's double-breasted. Like that, and that's exactly what he said. <laughs> Talking about ain't this cute? Now nah, we double breasted. Ah, <laughs> ah, uh, uh, beginning to think that this marriage is a mistake. Ah, mm. uh, we at dinner. I'm eating my steak. All right, all right. I cut the meat and put it in my mouth. He take the meat out my mouth and chew it for me. And this is too much. This is too much. You got to chew her. You got to chew her. Ah, <laughs> don't believe I want this type of love. Mm-mm, mm-mm. It's too much. Yeah. Ah. Oh, boy. Post mm. your comments on today's Strawberry Letter at Steve Harvey. FM I don't see this lasting, Shirley. <laughs> on Facebook. And check out the Strawberry Letter podcast on demand. Now, coming up at 46 minutes after the hour, it is Junior and Sports Talk right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for Junior and Sports Talk. Junior, what you got? All right, Shirley, been some moves. I just, uh, you know, Eric Benemy mm-hmm. didn't left the Chiefs, Unc. Your frat brother didn't left the Chiefs and now become Don't. the offensive coordinator. For the Washington Commanders. Now, the question I have, man, after two Super Bowl wins, this brother still don't have no head coach job. He this, should this, have it, by He should have been had one, man. I, I just think it's a, it, it's just I a shame. I think that's why he's moving on, because he's under Andy Reid's shadow, and he's not getting full credit for the work he does, because Andy Reid will every now and then call plays himself. Mm-hmm. And so I think he had to move on to really assert himself and show what he does. Because with yeah. Andy Reid as the head coach and Patrick Mahomes as the coach, it really overshadows his real skill set as offensive coordinator, I think, by moving on. That may be what he's trying to do. Yeah, I, that, hope that so. may, I hope that's a great move yeah. for him, too, man. Also, man, you know, Derek Carr has been released by the Las Vegas Raiders. And what? here it is, Tommy, another quarterback we could use. I just, we just begging. we begging at this point. He's going to beg. Just go ahead, Derek. If you ain't doing nothing, come on down. We got the rodeo in Houston going on right now. You're going to love that. Come on, you're going to love that, dog. Tur- on, we got we turkey, can... turkey legs. Don't we got nobody want to play for y'all's owner, man. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's oh. y'all's. Everybody, the, the word that got out about this guy. Mm. Man, mm. I just hate that, man. We just. We y'all's just owner, man, is the reason, is one of the reasons that Deshaun no, Watson. No, no got he's in the as reason. much trouble. Yeah. Oh, he the he sick the dogs on it. <laughs> yeah, he did that. Yeah, and everybody know it. Play for that. And yeah, them cats ain't going over that. Nah, time. nah, we, we I wouldn't want to play for it, but we can still use a quarterback because Davis Mills ain't gonna be it. Also, also with other news, man, here it is. The draft is coming up. The talk is about the Chicago. Now, what you think they should do, Tommy? This, this is for us because we number two. 
But the Chicago right. Bears are talking about trading Justin Fields and drafting Bryce Young. Now, this this would hurt us because we need That's Bryce Young. That's a good Young. quarterback right there. Yeah, Justin man. Fields. Yeah, Justin Fields, I think he's a great quarterback. He can stay in Chicago. Don't do that. Let us have Bryce Young. That's who we need. Dog, hey, dog, the draft is not for you to get the best team you can get. The draft is for them to get the best team they can get. They're not mm. trying to help y'all. Let us have Bryce. And we Let got five. you have Bryce. Yeah. That's not how this works, Wait, man. Am I, did I start off? We let want you. Bryce. Well, hey, I want them to let the Browns have a Super Bowl <laughs> ring. <laughs> how that's working. <laughs> All right, Junior. You have what? (laughs) Thank you, Junior. Coming up at the top of the hour, Steve, a guy on social media needs advice about his girlfriend's loyalty test. We'll talk about it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. If you're looking for someone to help you unpack Queen Charlotte of Bridgerton's story, you're in the right place. It's me, Gabby Collins. Come with me, because on Queen Charlotte, the official podcast, we're stepping behind the scenes and the drawing boards of this team to experience the life breathed into the Bridgerton prequel. Listen to the leaps executive producer and series director Tom Verica took to capture the feeling that's put that lump in your throat. And you've got to catch creator Shonda Rhimes. She's dropping gems, diamonds, and mics. On this podcast, we're going beyond the basic line of questioning and getting to the heart of the show, all while appreciating the contributions of the show's creative teams and remarkable cast. Go inside each episode of Queen Charlotte of Bridgerton's story with the creatives, the cast, and creator Shonda Rhimes leading the way. Listen to Queen Charlotte, the official podcast, Thursdays on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or anywhere you get your podcasts. Between April 1971 and September 1972, six young black girls were snatched off the streets in Washington, D.C. It took four murders before the police finally realized that one person was responsible. I will admit the others when you catch me, if you can. Signed, Freeway Phantom. This child was uh, laying on the side of the road. It appeared that she was probably either dragged out of the car or thrown out of the car. The person said, I murdered your daughter. The killer believed that he may have been seen by the mother. Did my mother see me? That guy is, he's out of sync with even the worst people. I thought that they would catch him. I thought it was just a matter of time. Is it possible that the killer is still alive? Listen to Freeway Phantom on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. All right, so Steve Michael on Facebook writes, things have been going good with my girlfriend and we've been talking about marriage. I'm even ready to propose. But she accidentally left an email open and I found out about some plans that really had me angry. It's not like I've been snooping, but I needed to use the computer and there it was. Apparently, she and a few of her friends are planning a, quote, loyalty test or a, quote, cheat test to see if I'm worthy. It's supposed to go down this weekend they're setting up a whole scheme or opportunity for me to cheat that my girlfriend and her friends have scripted out so steve tommy jr here's the question do i play along with it do i call her out brother play along, brother man, what is you doing? shut your mouth what boy God, you have gee, been man. handed the gift, the gift. of all <laughs> gifts Boy, you, get you to, finna you get pass to this test with flying colors? Mm-hmm. Dog, you can prepare statement. Uh, How dare you? I am about to marry the woman of my dream. I would never consider who I get away from me. Oh, boy, you could yeah, set dog. yourself up for a lifetime of enjoyment. Yes, do, don't be angry. It's a loyalty test. And you are going to pass it with flying colors. Boy, this boy, this is one of the greatest Man. gifts. Oh. You go in there and say just about anything, baby. Guess what Cheryl tried to tell me yesterday? You ain't gonna believe this. No, you ain't even got to do that. Man. Just go, baby. Uh, listen. Man, you could boy, you can set yourself up. 
<laughs> Boy, so this uh, is a this gift. Is, this is oh, a gift. This, this is sheer joy. Uh-huh. You found this and you mad? You stupid. You must be in your 20s. Have to be. Mm. Have to be. Mm. So use it to his advantage. Or well. either you this dumb is in your 30s. Uh-huh. This is oh. a, yeah, gift. a gift. Yeah, that's what you guys are saying. Oh, All right. That email. And you know what's going to happen? Yeah. Oh, man. Oh. <laughs> Unc, how would you yeah. be acting, Unc? How'd you be acting if you just knew this information? Just oh, what? Man, I, oh, one yeah. of them Tommy, scenarios, what y'all I what actually doing? cry. I actually <laughs> cry. In one of them. How could you? <laughs> how could you? How could you? If you only knew her. <laughs> if you only knew how she was, man. She's like the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. She's the most... Yeah. Beautiful, exquisite. She's just everything. Oh wow! Mm. And yeah. look, even though I'm flattered with this, I could never, mm. ever. Mm. I'm so looking forward to saying these vows. <laughs> I could have never meant anything more in my whole life. I can't even wait to utter the words mm-hmm. till death do us part, because this yeah. is it for me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I, this this proposal that you're giving to me is absurd. I wouldn't do it for a million. I wouldn't do it for ten million dollars. Wow. Oh, dog. I would say, dog. I would. Her girlfriends would really want to sleep with me after uh-huh. that. Uh yeah. huh. Yeah. 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 I yeah. 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 have my that. pick of the litter after that, dog. <laughs> yes, you would. Yeah. I'm afraid you're Man. right. <laughs> yeah. All right. If we have time, we have one more. Uh, I'm working with a guy. This one says. This is from Chris. I'm working with a guy who's who's driving everyone insane. There's got to be a way to shut him down. Have you ever hung out with someone who can't let anyone have the spotlight even for a second? No one, I mean no one, can tell a story or share an experience that this guy doesn't feel the need to one up. I don't want to slam the guy, but it's gotten to the point where we don't even want to talk about what we're having for lunch because somehow his lunch experience will be better or more interesting. All of us at the job are like, come on, dog, stop tripping. So, Steve, what's the best way to, to check homeboy? To this is from oh, Chris. No, 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 no. I, like, I know people like that. So now, since we one up in stories, mm-hmm. the story that the next story that I'm about to tell you, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> for you to top this one, you would actually have to beat Christ. <laughs> yeah. I'm, fi- I'm finna set one out there so far, dog. Uh-huh. <laughs> I have fun with this. <laughs> All right. Coming up at 20 minutes after the hour, we'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, it is time for our health and wellness moment. Please tell us about your green powder drink, Elevate You, and how it's going. Thank you, Tommy. Tommy tried it for the first time this week. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. And I felt good. Uh, and actually, I've been doing it every day, every day since then. So I like uh-huh. it, man. Which flavor? I feel better. And it's especially before working out. Ah, yeah. And the flavor good. That's what yeah. I was really concerned about is how is this going to taste? Because, mm-hmm. you know, we can't stand that yuck taste. It was Actually, I wanted some more. How about that? Mm. Yeah. I wanted yeah, some more. Say, I even asked Steve, I said, can I take this more than once a day? <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. that actually was one of the big concerns of mine because I know how important it is to drink your daily greens and what it can do for you on the cellular level. But I, I just couldn't gag it down. And this changed my whole game around, man. It's just a game changer. Just really, really great taste. And it's changing a lot of people's lives, man. It's helping people feel more energetic. It's helping people with their digestive health. It's helping people Mm -hmm. focus more. I don't miss a day, man. I go to the gym now before I come to the radio show in the morning. Mm -hmm. So I'm up super early to get it in because I found that if I try to work out after radio, too much of my day gets in the way. It's just great. ElevateU.com, everybody. Get you a subscription, and they'll make sure that you never run out. They'll keep it coming to you. But ElevateU.com, it starts with an L, Elevate U, and it's great product. A lot of people there. Just go online. Check it out. Okay. All right. It's Coming good. up at 33 minutes after the hour, we'll play another round of Would You Rather right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for a round of Would You Rather. Would You Rather... Get food poisoning during a business meeting, or would you rather get food poisoning during a vacation? Mm. Why do I want to be food poisoned? Uh-huh. <laughs> why, why is that a would you rather? 
Because Probably doing the business meeting. I don't want to mess up the vacation. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. That's Do all it we need business, from business meeting. We good. I'm, now I'm off a week. Now I got a vacation. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. That makes sense, Steve. I want to throw up on the conference table. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Everybody see. Yeah. 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 Everybody wants the business meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Don't want to do it on vacation. Mm -mm. All right. Would you rather be alone for the next five years or never be alone for the next five years? What? Alone as in? Alone. By yourself. Nobody else in the world at all? Alone. No, nah, I'd rather. I, I need some I people. I'm going to take this company and just ignore them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do that now. I'd be in a room full of people be sitting over there just by myself. <laughs> Won't make no eye contact, huh? Dog, I promise you. I've had people talk to me and act like I ain't him. <laughs> <laughs> I do it all the time, especially Zoned my stylist. I ignore him all the time. He just don't talk to me. All right. Would you rather ride the world's tallest roller coaster or the world's the world's fastest water slide? Oh, no. ah. mm. The highest mm. roller coaster or fastest the water ta- slide? Yeah, the tallest roller. I'm gonna get on that slide. Yeah, let's just get on the slide. That height, that height, I can't do, man. Well, you're not doing Ooh. well with it. Now. But let me ask you a question: Where does water Shut up, slide? Junior. slide well, no, hold on, Steve. Steve. Hold on, Steve. Shut what up, say? Junior. What he say? Come on, I'm not doing well with height now. Nah, you shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't gonna let that slide up under the covers. I saw it. Heard it. Yeah, I missed that. <laughs> well, now the only thing about that water slide is where's we sliding to this fast? Oh, okay. Wait a minute. See? Yeah. If I'm sliding down into 13, 15 feet of water. Of water. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ah. Man, I need last, some depends on. Last time on. I was on I put, a amusement on a park coast. ride was on the Steve Harvey show. Uh-huh. We had to go to Disneyland and film an episode, uh-huh. and I had to get on the ride. Yeah. Man, tell me what I do, though. It's not for yeah. you. Okay. No. <laughs> All right, think back to your school days. This is the last one. Would you okay. rather get the worst grades in, in an honors class or get the best grades in a remedial class? Oh, Remedial. Well, I'm, I'm at the top of the class. What are you talking about? I did that. I was yeah. actually in a remedial class Wait, in elementary for four weeks. By accident, they put me in a remedial class for four weeks. Straight A's for four weeks. I was so hurt when they put me back in that regular class. All right, guys. That's today's round of Would You Rather. Uh, Coming up at 49 minutes after, we'll have our last break of the day and some closing remarks from the one and only Steve Harvey right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. If you're looking for someone to help you unpack Queen Charlotte of Bridgerton's story, you're in the right place. It's me, Gabby Collins. Come with me, because on Queen Charlotte, the official podcast, we're stepping behind the scenes and the drawing boards of this team to experience the life breathed into the Bridgerton prequel. Listen to the leaps executive producer and series director Tom Verica took to capture the feeling that's put that lump in your throat. And you've got to catch creator Shonda Rhimes. She's dropping gems, diamonds, and mics. On this podcast, we're going beyond the basic line of questioning and getting to the heart of the show, all while appreciating the contributions of the show's creative teams and remarkable cast. Go inside each episode of Queen Charlotte of Bridgerton's story with the creatives, the cast, and creator Shonda Rhimes leading the way. Listen to Queen Charlotte, the official podcast, Thursdays on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or anywhere you get your podcasts. All right, guys, here we are on this Thursday, our last break of the day. It's been a good day, a fun day. Mm -hmm. You guys learned a lot, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Brad pregnant. Don yep, Lemon pregnant. Don Lemon congratulations again. Don Lemon is not pregnant. I was just saying, y'all, we have to give on credit. He did really well today. He didn't even Yeah, he did. he did. He did. He did, he did no. Good. Mm-hmm. No. How many times no. I cussed, though? You just said one time. That was one time. Huh? He cussed one time? Just one time in the first hour. Did he say that, uh, nuclear N word? Did he say that? Is no, that no, he, did, he didn't mm-hmm. say it. No, no, he didn't say that. That's not, that's okay. not cussing. Now, no. off that the can't air. be cussing, cussing. <laughs> 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 oh, <Yeah>. uh-huh. <laughs> hey, uh, you know man. what? I have some closing remarks. I want to remind people of something. Uh, 
I know sometimes in life, but everything I need. You know, sometimes when you're asking God for strength, do you know that he's going to do things and cause things that happen in your life to strengthen you? That's how it works, man. And so I think, man, as you go through life, if you can just understand that God is gracious, man, that God is kind, that God is loving, forgiving, and God is giving. And when you ask him for something, just understand, it is not going to be in a straight line. But it's okay. Get on the journey with him and watch how it works. And it always can end up as a beautiful thing, even when it don't go your way, and which, oh, by the way, when does it ever? But somehow God gets you right where you need to be and oftentimes in a better place. So you just got to follow along, everybody, and just know this. You ain't the only one going through it. You ain't the only one been through it. It's happening to everybody. That's why it keeps happening to you. But if you keep the faith, keep believing, and just watch how he works. Because God, he's a bad man. Yeah, he is. He's a bad man. Those are my closing remarks. I hope that helps you today. Uh, talk to God today, y'all. He'd love to hear from you. Y'all have a good one. Huh? For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. On Queen Charlotte, the official podcast, we're stepping behind the scenes and the drawing boards of this team to experience the life breathed into the Bridgerton prequel. Listen to the leaps executive producer and series director Tom Verica took to capture the feeling that puts that lump in your throat. And you've got to catch creator Shonda Rhimes. She's dropping gems, diamonds, and mics. You can listen to Queen Charlotte, the official podcast, every Thursday on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or anywhere you listen to your favorite shows. What if I told you there was more to the story behind game-changing events? Get ready for my new podcast, That Moment with Damon John. Every Tuesday on the Black Effect Podcast Network, we'll jump into the personal stories of some of the most influential people on the planet, from business moguls and celebrities to athletes and artists. Join me every Tuesday for That Moment with Damon John on the Black Effect Podcast Network, the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever. Wherever you go to get your podcasts. Between April 1971 and September 1972, six young black girls were snatched off the streets in Washington, D.C. This child was uh, laying on the side of the road. The person said, I murdered your daughter. The killer believed that he may have been seen. I will admit the others when you catch me if you can. Sign Freeway Phantom. Listen to Freeway Phantom on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.